Welcome to Talk of the Town on KNSJ. I'm Jim Brewster, and we have a special guest today. He is the Consul General of Azerbaijan, and we're going to talk with him about all things Azerbaijani today. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Nasimi Agayev. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming, and uh, we'd like to know a lot about yourself and Azerbaijan. Let's start by talking about you. Um, what's your background? Uh, I uh, studied uh, diplomacy, international relations in Azerbaijan, uh, and right after I finished with my studies, I joined the Foreign Service in 1999, like 18 years ago. And so I served uh, in our embassies in uh, Vienna and in Berlin. Uh, at the same time, the later uh, at the embassy of Azerbaijan in Washington, D.C. for two years. And since over five years, I have been the Council General of Azerbaijan in Los Angeles. But we cover uh, California and 12 other Western states. And this is the only Council General Azerbaijan has in the entire United States. Well, and we have a large territory to cover. Yeah, I guess you do. Uh, <laughs> if it's uh, for the whole United States, um, why is it only 12 states that, <laughs> that you serve? So um, the, uh, we have an embassy in Washington, D.C. that is responsible for 37 states. Uh, and the 13 state, the remaining 13 states are covered by the Consulate General. They so couldn't <laughs> quite handle the whole thing. The, you know, uh, we did not have any presence up um, uh, today, up until 2005, when the Council General was uh, established. N uh, no presence, diplomatic presence, in the Western United States. And this is a very important part of the United States. So our president uh, made this strategic decision to open a consulate general in Los Angeles, but give it a large jurisdiction, cover so many states from Montana to New Mexico, all uh, states westwards. So tell us a little bit about the history of your country, Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan is located in a very interesting part of the world. It's in the Caucasus region. Um, uh, it's a very ancient country, uh, a young, uh, relatively young republic, but an ancient country with lots of history, culture. Um, Azerbaijan um, established in 1918 its first democratic republic. Uh, and it actually became the first ever secular democracy, parliamentary democracy in the entire Muslim world. It's a majority Muslim country, 95% Muslim population, and it became the first ever secular democracy in the entire Muslim world in 1918. In 1919, Azerbaijan gave the voting rights to women for the first time also among all Muslim nations, actually a year before the United States did it. So we beat the United States for one year. In that, in that sense. So it, woman, a woman emancipation, a championship of rights for women uh, has been a major focus in our development since 100 years. And next year, actually, we're going to celebrate the 100th anniversary of our first independence. But in 1920, two years later, uh, the Soviets came and invaded Azerbaijan, putting an end to our independence. And we became part of the Soviet Union for the following 71 years up to the establishment of the Second Republic. Now, how did that uh, invo involvement or takeover by the Soviet Union uh, impact your culture? So, um, it, it impacted the culture, definitely. Um, like during Stalin uh, era, um, even some national instruments of Azerbaijan were banned because uh, Mr. Joseph Stalin thought that they would strengthen our national identity and weaken our uh, so-called Soviet identity. So if, uh, uh, Sunday, our major national holiday, uh, a Novorus holiday in Azerbaijan, it's a New Year's holiday, was also banned for decades in this country. Of course, a lot of uh, pressure on, on, our, uh, on developing our language, our culture and uh, traditions. But later in 1960s, 70s, especially in 1970s, uh, uh, Azerbaijan then um, had more opportunities to develop its identity, culture, language, especially thanks to lots of efforts by Haider Aliyev, who used to, to, to head the Soviet Azerbaijan during those years, and then later became president of Azerbaijan, but this time independent Azerbaijan. So thanks to, to his efforts, Azerbaijan kept its identity, and when we became independent, it wasn't hard to stand on our feet and move forward as an independent and free nation relying on our strength. 
Now, was it difficult in some cases to recover what had been for many decades a lost culture or certain elements of the culture? Were some things forgotten and not recovered? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say if uh, we uh, had big loss in that sense uh, because, yes, you know, during Stalin era, those purges, Azerbaijan lost many intellectuals. Lots of poets and writers were killed. Um, just because uh, they may have thought differently or these uh, people in 1930s thought that these guys, uh, um, they, these intellectuals, they were working against the Soviet Union or they just had to fill that quota. Uh, so uh, that was a huge damage to, to Azerbaijan, uh, 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 of course. Uh, but at the same time, um, as an independent and free nation now, it's we got the chance and opportunity to again uh, focus on all those areas and uh, develop these areas in line with our own wishes and own desires without depending on anyone. So um, were certain, I don't know, buildings, artifacts, uh, things like statues uh, removed or destroyed yeah. or, yes? Yes, yeah, so for example, uh, the biggest... Um, uh, damage uh, was suffered by the faith communities. Many mosques, uh, synagogues, churches, cathedrals were destroyed, especially during 1930s, 40s. There was a, we can sometimes only see the pictures of those uh, beautiful uh, house of worship. Like there was a huge cathedral in downtown Baku, a uh, beautiful cathedral, and we can only now see it in pictures. And so these uh, destructions took place um, thousands of mosques were closed and destroyed. Uh, so as a new free independent nation, we try to restore this house worship and, and to build new ones because the freedom of religion is very essential uh, for, for our country. Now tell me about the other 5%. You said 95% Muslim. What are the other 5%? So 5% uh, um, of the population constitute uh, non-Muslims. These are uh, 30,000 Jews, a very vibrant Jewish community that has lived in Azerbaijan for 2,000 years. These are maj uh, primarily Mizrahi Jews, so not Sephardic, not Ashkenazi, but Middle Eastern Jews who came to Azerbaijan when the second temple in Jerusalem was destroyed through Babylon and Iran. And they came and settled down in mountainous areas of Azerbaijan, hence their name mountainous Jews or highland Jews. And then we got also uh, a flow inflow of uh, Ashkenazi Jews from Europe, uh, especially during the World War II, escaping Nazi persecutions. So we have a very vibrant Jewish community, but we have also a, a vibrant Christian community of half a million uh, in Azerbaijan. And they have also lived since first century uh, in Azerbaijan. One of the apostles of Jesus Bartholomew, he came to Azerbaijan spreading Christianity and his remnants today are at the uh, cathedral, uh, at the Orthodox Cathedral in Baku. In 4th century, Azerbaijan became one of the first or earliest uh, Christian uh, nations actually adapting Christianity as a state religion in 313. So we have this Jewish heritage in the country, Christian heritage of course, in this majority Muslim nation where Jews and Christians and Zoroastrians, Baha'is, even Krishnas, they get along very well and they live in harmony and respect with each other. Why? Because when they don't elsewhere? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, because, you know, Azerbaijan was located at this intersection of cultures and religions, right at the heart of Eurasia, at the heart of the ancient Silk Road. So many different cultures intersected in, in our country. So people uh, learned how to get along with each other in order to to live together, to live in that piece of land. It's, a, uh, it's the size of the state of Maine uh, in com comparison or the country of Austria. Uh, so it's a small country, so people got to, uh, to had to learn this, uh, to, get, to live together, and it developed a certain culture of peaceful coexistence. And as a government, uh, we have done uh, our best to foster those traditions of tolerance acceptance uh, and respect for diversity it, because we see it as a strength uh, as a virtue not as a weakness it sounds like or it seems like other sh other countries should be using you as a model 
Exactly. We we tried to to show the possibility of peace, the possibility of peaceful coexistence among religions, among ethnicities. Even within Islam, we've got 70% Shiites and 30% Sunnis, and they also get along with each other very well, uh, as opposed to some other countries in the neighborhood. They uh, pray together even, they marry each other, they work together. Uh, the largest mosque in, uh, in the South Caucasus is in Azerbaijan, and every Friday you see there Shiites and Sunnis praying together, in the, standing in the same rows, listening one Friday to a Shiite imam, the other Friday to a Sunni imam. So that's another unique situation, I think. Let us uh, paint a picture of Azerbaijan. Um, if we went there today, what would we see? What's the terrain like? Uh, uh, what what recreation is there? What points of interest are there? Yes. Um, Azerbaijan has a very interesting geography. Uh, out of um, 12 climate zones existing in the world, we have nine. So I, when I was in Hawaii, they said we have 11. So it's just two below Hawaii. So it's a very diverse uh, geography uh, from high mountains to beaches, uh, uh, seaside areas, and de- desert-like uh, climate. So it's um, a, a diverse uh, uh, climate, diverse uh, geography. Uh, that's why it allows us uh, to develop tourism uh, enormously. We have uh, in Baku alone a very medieval architectural uh, in, in old town and then we have a baroque style buildings architecture from turn of the century uh, surrounding this old town and today very modern architecture like the one Heydar Aliyev cultural center designed by Zaha Hadi the famous architect which is um, they considered to be a masterpiece of modern architecture in the world uh, we have a caller on the line oh we did have a caller on the line okay well um, Okay, let's move on to uh, tourism. Do you have a lot of tourism there? And that's uh, one of the priorities of Azerbaijan. And they, during the last few years, the, the number of tourists has increased. And that's also thanks to the number of hotels that is, has been, is being constructed. And, uh, and also, um, we have uh, simplified the visa regime uh, enormously. Now you can get a visa for Azerbaijan within three hours online. You don't have to glue to your passport. It's uh, uh, just sent to you by email, and you can just put it in your passport and go and travel to Azerbaijan. It's it's very easy, uh, uh, and we do all these uh, efforts in order to bring more and more tourists to to the country. It's one of the best ways to to show a country and tell your story and build bridges. When it was part of the Soviet Union, I guess it was a tourist area, wasn't it? It it was a very uh, beloved tourist area within the Soviet Union. We would get get lots of tourists from other parts of the Soviet Union coming to us from Russia, Ukraine, Central Asia, exactly. But now we are going beyond that uh, neighborhood, also reaching out to, to other European nations and in, in the Middle East. And also we would like to get more and more tourists from uh, the United States and specifically from San Diego to go, going to Azerbaijan. Is that part of your job as uh, Consul General to uh, help promote tourism? Exactly. It's one of the uh, port- uh, part of our portfolio as the, as the consulate uh, to promote tourism, to show these opportunities that we have there. Every uh, year we've got this Los Angeles um, uh, travel and adventure show and we participate at this show with our booth and inform the visitors uh, about these opportunities uh, in, in Azerbaijan, but also using other avenues to promote tourism and get more to Americans traveling there. You're listening to Talk of the Town on KNSJ. We have the Consul General of Azerbaijan, Nasimi Agayev, with us today. We're live. You can call, you can call us at uh, 619-528-8383. That's 619-528-8383 if you have any comments or questions. And actually, we have Marie on the line. Hello, Marie. Hi. What a treat to have Mr. Gaev on the air on KNSJ. I am fascinated uh, about your country, and sadly, I don't know very much about it. <laughs> I, um, I'm wondering, is there any struggle within your country to remain secular? Uh, and uh, you probably hear the, the narrative here in the United States about the treatment of women. And I'm wondering if women in uh, Azerbaijan 
are able to um, um, be on a uh, an equal level with men? Can they own businesses and and things like yes, that? Yes, exactly. Thank you very much for this for this question. Thank you uh, for your kind words. So, Azerbaijan, as I said, it actually the woman emancipation in the w Muslim world started from Azerbaijan. We became the first country to get, uh, grant the voting rights to women. We the first country to put women on stage, actually, allow them to perform in, in, in theaters. And then the first uh, female aviator comes from Azerbaijan. And today, we've got uh, women are uh, on equal footing with men. They have the e e equal rights. We've got 21 women in our parliament. Uh, last session, Azerbaijani parliament beat the U.S. Congress in terms of women uh, representation, actually. So we have uh, uh, ha more than half of Ph.D. holders in Azerbaijan, Ph.D. holders, are women. We've got uh, judges, uh, 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 very well representation of women in the government, many uh, in the ministerial position, de deputy ministers and committee chairwomen. So, and also justices. Uh, sev several um, Supreme Court justices are women. And one of them is, by the way, a Jewish. So a Jewish woman and a, a, a Supreme Court justice in a majority Muslim country. Uh, with also lots of judges in the judicial system. And so women are well represented in Azerbaijan and they, are, they, are, uh, they have enjoy equal rights uh, with, with, a, with men. Marie, Fantastic. yeah. Is there any... And is there any struggle in remaining oh, secular? Uh, yes, um, Azerbaijan is staunchly secular, so the religion is uh, totally separated from the uh, government, from state. Um, Azerbaijan, of course, if you look at our geography, it's not an easy geography to be in. Um, uh, Azerbaijan is close to the Middle East um, uh, and some other hotspot areas. Uh, but uh, we tr do our best to protect and shield our model of peaceful coexistence and our secularism uh, from alien elements uh, and from extremism and radicalism. So we have uh, uh, some tough laws to make sure that this radicalism is not to be brought to Azerbaijan and this precious model we have there stays intact and thrives. So uh, the, the population, uh, uh, and there's a s strong societal support for secularism in Azerbaijan um, and that's why um, this this model is working. Marie well, anything sir, yes go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry um, what about uh, reaching out to countries that are suffering or in the war-torn areas uh, is Azerbaijan able to invite uh, immigrants or people who are trying to flee from from again war zones What's yeah. the position of uh, Azerbaijan on that? Azerbaijan actually has uh, uh, hosted many refugees, uh, especially during the first years of our independence. And uh, many ref refugees are from uh, Central Asia, uh, Mescheti Turks, uh, they, they are called, and we naturalized them. 50,000 of them, they got citizenship in Azerbaijan. And there were also lots of refugees, uh, Azerbaijani refugees from Armenia, over 250,000 of them who, who uh, had to flee their homes in Armenia and move to Azerbaijan and uh, they, they, are, um, they are still uh, refugees uh, in Azerbaijan and also a large population of uh, the kind of internally displaced population, internal refugees which were um, driven from their homes in the uh, southwestern part of Azerbaijan was, which was an, um, uh, uh, overtaken and invaded by our neighboring uh, Armenia uh, 25 years ago. That's why these people are still domestic refugees in their own country. So we have uh, to deal with our own refugee population, over one million of them. It's not easy, uh, but government uh, has built many, many settlements, facilities for refugees, for uh, internally displaced population in the country and providing services to them. Thank you for all that information. I'm just so ha again so happy that KNSJ got you on the air, and we can learn about. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for the Thank call, you. Marie. Goodbye. Now, before we move on, um, you have some music you'd like to present. 
Yeah, um, in general, Azerbaijan has a very uh, rich musical culture. Actually, one of I, I mentioned several firsts in the Muslim world, but another first was that uh, be, we became the first country to compose and stage a, a first operetta, opera, and ballet in the Muslim world. So it's a, in, in the beginning of the uh, 20th century. So uh, we brought to you here uh, a short piece uh, from the ballet called Path of Sunders uh, from famous Azerbaijani composer Kara Karayev. <laughs> What's happening to your population taking in all these refugees? Um, what, wh what's your population growth like uh, in Azerbaijan? So um, when um, this, um, the war uh, took place 25 years ago when Armenia invaded 20% of Azerbaijan's territory expelling all these people, over 800,000 of them, and coupled with uh, 250,000 from Armenia itself, we became, suddenly we got over 1 million uh, refugees and internal displaced population uh, and we, our population was like 7 million back then uh, uh, but today Azerbaijan has 10 million population and the refugee population has also increased <coughs> um, uh, of course it's a huge huge burden for the government because government has to spend uh, every year uh, m uh, huge amounts of money to provide services to the refugees uh, build facilities, new facilities for them and, and relocate them. Uh, for example, up to 2008, we still had tent camps in Azerbaijan. The, the refugees were living in tents, in tent camps, in uh, winter or summer. But once Azerbaijan economically got better, and uh, we s closed the last tent camp in 2008, and all these refugees were relocated to new facilities, temporary settlements that the government built for them. Uh, and we continue doing it, uh, building new facilities as well. So it's, a, it's of course, um, a huge burden as long as this issue hasn't been resolved, as, as long as they are not allowed to go back to their homes and lands, uh, we will continue to have this burden. So we are working on resolving this uh, conflict peacefully with uh, our neighbor Armenia, and hopefully the leaders in Armenia will understand that Th there is no other way other than living peacefully uh, together as good neighbors. Tell us a little about how people make money there, the economy and natural resources and uh, businesses there. So uh, energy, uh, as an, uh, Azerbaijan has been um, a major oil producing country uh, uh, for the last 150 years. Uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, actually, Baku was producing 50% of oil in the world. Nobel brothers were there, Rockefellers, Rothschilds. Even 30% of Nobel Prize Fund was uh, financed by the money Nobel brothers made in, with Azerbaijani oil. One of the, the major goal of Hitler uh, and why he got stuck in Stalingrad was that he was moving towards Azerbaijan to get to invade Baku, get hold of its oil, and starve out Soviet Union in that war, because we were providing 80% of fuel for the Soviet army. But thanks God, he got stuck in Stalingrad and was like 500 kilometers away from Baku, so that changed the whole course of the uh, of the World War II. Otherwise, you know, you don't know what would have happened 
if uh, Hitler could uh, get hold of Baku. So uh, oil has been a very uh, a driving force and en energy in, in general, the gas resources, but Azerbaijan has also st started diversifying its economy, going beyond energy. Like uh, recently we launched a, the major railroad that connects China with Europe through Azerbaijan. So you can now board the train in Beijing, and if you have enough time and patience, go up to Berlin and, and, and London. But it'll be very important for cargo transportation and connecting these countries together. And the more interconnected you are, the, the less conflicts and wars are, are, are likely. So that's why, yes, in, in Azerbaijan, these other industries are developing, like agriculture, IT industries and uh, uh, tourism sector is a one becoming a bigger and bigger sector, employing people and manufacturing in general. So there are uh, new jobs are being created uh, every year. Uh, and so the economy uh, took some hits because of the price of oil went down. But I think it also offered Azerbaijan even more uh, opportunities to diversify its economy even more rigorously. Uh, so, and we are moving in that direction. Now, um, what's the relationship between Azerbaijan and the United States like today? So, U.S. has been a, a, a strong friend and partner since the first days uh, of our independence. Uh, it started with energy cooperation. Azerbaijan invited U.S. companies to come and help us develop our oil resources and, and, and later gas resources. And the major U.S. oil giants came and, and worked in Azerbaijan, continued to work in Azerbaijan. And then in, when 9-11 happened, Azerbaijan was the f one of the first countries to offer its unconditional assistance to the United States. And also we sent troops to Afghanistan. We opened our air uh, space, our land routes for the use by an um, uh, international uh, coalition uh, to fight the terrorists in Afghanistan. And our troops are still there fighting shoulder with shoulder with American troops. And 40% of all supplies going to Afghanistan for the last 13, 14 years have been passing through Azerbaijan. So it has been an essential transportation link for American troops and international troops based in Afghanistan. So we have a security cooperation, energy cooperation, and very essential. Uh, so um, we, we consider the United States a friend and you guys consider Azerbaijan as a, fr as a friend. They, it's a, the largest trade partner for the United States in the, in the South Caucasus region. Uh, many, many European, uh, U US companies are working in, uh, in Azerbaijan in different sectors of the economy. So we, and we try to do more and more to bring our two countries even closer, which is very, very important. Is your relationship with the United States a especially um, in support of military actions, controversial back home? Um, uh, not, I, I wouldn't say that, uh, because um, Azerbaijani people, uh, we do not, uh, they do not support um, uh, the, for example, when Afghanistan happened, when with 9-11 uh, terrorist attack took place, all Azerbaijanis were, uh, were very, very concerned. Uh, because uh, we we are in that region, we do not want terrorism to to get ho to to I increase. So we are extremely against all those tendencies. Thank you for joining us. This has been Talk of the Town on KNSJ.